Good morning. Good morning. We are so glad you are here, Windsor United Methodist Church. And those that are with us and are new for the first time, we are here to feel the presence of God in and through this space. I hope that everything that you experience here in worship speaks to the community of faith that cares about you and welcomes you. If you're joining us on Facebook today, we welcome you to this space and we want you to know always and everywhere that there is a community here that cares for you as well. And we would love to have you in our presence. So, for those that are traveling or those that are under the weather or those that are coming with us weekly online, you are welcome here. And you are welcome here. Everything you need for worship will be in the United Methodist Hymnal or in your bulletin. And we welcome you to this space of communion, of community, and of joy. Good morning, my name is Cheryl Reed. I'm your liturgist this morning. Um, I'm going to start with a few announcements. This week, the floors in both hallways and in the East Fellowship Hall were uh, waxed. The sham carpets were shampooed in the sanctuary. And so the committee would like to thank those that helped to move furniture in and out, and especially the Tuesday uh, AA group that helped lift out the heavy stuff. Our food of the month. <laughs> Our August food of the month this year is the snacks that we prepare for Windsor School. Every um, couple weeks we prepare boxes of snacks for the Windsor School that the, we give to the teachers for the kids to have during the week, during the day. The sheet of items is in the back, or you can just put money in the little jar and they'll get purchased. But that's what August is, is the snacks for the Windsor School. We're going to be collecting backpacks this year and school supplies. The school supply boxes are in the back there. And there's sheets that you can pick up as you're out shopping and purchase those items. But we found out that there's about 30 kids at Windsor School that will have no backpacks, that had no backpacks last year. So we're going to, as a group, purchase 24 backpacks, and we will be um, purchasing those and then having a ceremony to bless those before they get sent to Windsor School. Also, there will be no women's women of faith this week. It's a misprinted <coughs> bulletin. Yeah. So we'll be resuming in September, but we are not meeting in August. Are there any other announcements? I have an announcement. I have a quick announcement. I am excited to get to know you all as a community, and one of the ways that I do that is beyond worship on Sunday morning. It's getting to know with, uh, sitting down with you and talking through what your passions and ministry are. So I want you to take a notice in the bulletin that I will be taking regular office hours. Those aren't the only office hours that I will be working, but those are the ones I'm going to try to protect as a way to meet with people, to greet with people. And if it looks like I'm working during those hours, I will be. But just knock on the door, come in, say hi, let's have a sit, let's talk, okay? So I just want to make sure you notice that over the next few weeks. Thank you. One other announcement. Last year we had put up a sign-up sheet for the upper rooms, and we finally got them. The people that had signed up and wanted them, they have been distributed to, but we have a couple extra um, of these booklets, so if you're interested, see Christine in the back, and she'll make sure you get one. We do have a couple left over, so. Okay. If you're able, please stand with me in the call to worship. We are here to worship God, a, worship a remarkable God. The love of God embodies us, the grace of Christ redeems us, the joy of the Spirit uplifts us. We come as the joyful, eager, and thankful, thankful recipients of amazing grace. This is the day, 657 in your hymnal, we are going to sing it through two times. Let us sing with some joy this morning, folks, what do you say?
Sunday as we join together to share those things that are on our minds, those joys we carry with us, but also those frustrations, those worries, those wonderings, those wrestlings. And so I want to open up a space to share the joys and concerns of this church. What is on your heart? Yes. Um, I have a Very much so. Thank you. A CT scan. A CT scan. On my lungs. On your lungs. Thank you. Um, I have a joy. My three brothers, one from Virginia, one from Sioux City, and one from Minnesota, are coming to my house to do projects. Woo <laughs> God of the first and the last, God of the grandeur of the cosmos and the love that relates to each of us personally, we give thanks to you for all the ways that you bless our lives, especially today the beauty and abundance of nature and the cooling and refreshing rains that come to bring life and joy. The love of family and friends, those gathered here and those extended that nurtures our minds and our hearts and draws us near to that divine spirit of love. The joy of knowing you and hearing your word. A word of compassion. A word of empathy. A word that brings so much into our lives. Send your spirit during this time of worship. Be with us in our wonderings, in our frustrations, in our wrestlings, in our doubts, in our fears. Be with us as we understand that you are in the hard moments and in the easy. You are in the complicated, and what seems so simple contains you as well. Be with us in this time of worship, so that we might dream your dreams and see your visions of a world as you created it to be. Guide our thoughts and actions, bring us closer to you, so that we might do your will and dwell in your house forever. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, and all the company of heaven, we pray the prayer he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning is from Exodus. 3, 11 through 14, 4, 1, and 10 through 14. But Moses said to God, Who am I to go to Pharaoh and to bring the Israelites out of Egypt? God said, I'll be with you, and this will show that, you're, that you are that I am the one who sent you. After you bring the people out of Egypt, you will come back here and worship God on this mountain. But Moses said to God, if I now come to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your ancestors has sent me to you, they are going to ask me, What's this God's name? What am I supposed to say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. So say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. Then Moses replied, But what if they don't believe me or pay attention to me? That they might say to me, the Lord didn't appear to you. But Moses said to the Lord, My Lord, I have never been able to speak well, not yesterday, not the day before, and certainly not now since you've been talking to your servant. I have a slow mouth and a thick tongue. Then the Lord said to him, Who gives people the ability to speak? Who's responsible for making them unable to speak or hard of, hear, of hearing, sighted, or blind? Isn't it I, the Lord? Now go. I'll help you speak, and I'll teach you what you should say. But Moses again said, Please, my Lord, just send someone else. Then the Lord got angry at Moses and said, What about your brother Aaron, the Levite? I know he can speak very well. He's on his way out to meet you now, and he's looking forward to seeing you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. For the last few weeks, well, actually last week, we started on a sermon series called Under the Table and Dreaming. And I gave you the, I, I said that, Dreams change everything. Do you remember me saying that? Dreams change everything. Over the next few weeks, actually this week and next week, we'll be talking about dreams, aspirations, and hopes. And I think it's important as a church to think about where God can be in the possibilities, where God can expand our possibilities. We sometimes get in that common drum of everyday life, the regular routine, and we forget that things are possible. We forget that God can make things possible. It requires trust. So today I want to tell you that we are people, because we are God's people, of possibilities. Because God is a God of possibilities. Not restriction, but possibilities. And so today I want to talk to you a little bit about what those possibilities can look like. It, I was much younger uh, than I am now when I was traveling on the coast in Oregon with my brother, and we went to Canyon Beach, the famous uh, rock formation there in Canyon Beach, and I remember after we got done hiking and after we got done looking around, that we traveled into the little town there that is an artist community, and that artist community has people that are painting, has people that are making wood products, and I was captivated as we went into this little shop of a person who was blowing glass. Have you ever watched somebody blow glass? It's fascinating. You know, as a person that's never done that, I've done a lot of crafts and never blown glass. He took this raw uh, material, this sand, this silicate, he took it and he put it in the flame. He heated it up red hot, right? It was this little goo on the end of a stick, it looked like. And he starts taking his tools and blowing through the rod. And soon, through the heat, and the cooling, he has something beautiful that he's able to produce and sell. This last uh, July, when Mara and the kids and I were on our travels, for the first time we went into Seattle, not for the first time into Seattle, but for the first time into a glass museum, to truly, I'm probably saying it wrong, 
Museum. And when you go in there, you realize that glass blowing is an art that can be beyond your possibilities. What you think is possible, uh, flat glass with these beautiful stained glass windows that we have around us, there's so much more that can be done with glass. This is an artist that pushed the limits of what could be done. And Mara is going to put some, some uh, pictures on the screen for you to see. As you look at the stuff that's on the screen, he takes glass with a team of people and through firing it red hot and cooling it with these long tongs and shaping it and molding it, you have these images. You start to see plant life that comes up out of the ground and flows in colors that are represented in nature. You start to see chandeliers hanging from the ceiling, chandeliers that look like sea creatures and sea life, floating around above you in vibrant colors. You start to see bowls that aren't just bowls, right? They become a piece of art. You would almost feel bad putting something in it because it's so beautiful and gorgeous. And it all starts with that heating up and that cooling down. The process of heating up and the process of cooling down. It's important for us to remember that we are people of possibilities. There was a desert father, early Christianity, went off into the desert to find spirituality with God, who said, no problems, no possibilities. Listen to that. No problems, no possibilities. If you never have problems, that means you're never trying anything. You're never trying to look for the possibilities around you. Have you ever done improv or seen somebody that did improv? And there's a, there's a game they play. It's a technique. It's not no, but. Maybe not even but, no. But it's yes, and. No but. No but. We can be people of buts, buts, buts. It has been said before that committees are the place that good ideas go to die. Have you heard that? Have you experienced that? All too often we see the needs and bring what we think are reasonable and good and creative solutions, but through the whittling away, the carving away, the sanding back, the dismissing of great possibilities, we can seem to dismiss them, sawed up, chewed up, and left asunder on the floor. We need a good exercise program in our churches. Our butts, our butts, our butts are flapping around, and we need to let go of the big butts. We can be afraid of where the dreams, hopes, and aspirations can take us. This fear keeps us from seeing the possibilities around us keeps us from seeing the beauty of what can be created. We think in a two-dimensional realm, but God operates with many more dimensions than we can conceive. And through the heating up and the cooling down, through the igniting and the shaping and the cooling, we can see something beautiful around us. Moses. What a beautiful passage today. Moses, driven out of Egypt at the lap of luxury as he saw the injustices and the oppression of the people around him, and he couldn't take it anymore, he does the unthinkable, kills, and runs in fear. He finds himself no longer in luxury, but in a desert area, a lonely area place, in a wilderness. The captivity to fear will be changed into the freedom of possibilities for Moses. As we know the story, many of us, very well. There's something about this passage that catches me. 
I got a question for you. How long would you have to sit and watch a bush that was on fire to know that it was burning but not being consumed? A minute, a second, an hour. How long? One thing that we know by Moses is he is sitting and paying attention. He is watching. You see something on fire in the middle of nowhere, you wonder, wow, how did that happen? But you also, also you might also wonder, will it catch and start to spread? Am I in danger? Moses watches. He looks. He pays attention long enough to know that it is on fire, but that it is not consumed. There's a word here. We've all heard it before. Who will I say sent me, Moses says. Tell him, I am who I am. The Hebrew word here is hayah, okay? And it's, it, it's interesting because one of the commentators says it's almost translated wrong. I am who I am. It should be translated as I am going to be what I am going to be. I am what I am seems to say I was what I was in the, few, in the past. I was what I was before. I was what I was always. But I'm going to be what I'm going to be, which is the Hebrew translation of it, seems to mean that I am continuing to move. I'm continuing to be. To name is to clarify, to put a container on a thing. To name can be a source of control. But God isn't controlled. God doesn't fit into the containers that we assume in our own hearts. And we do not shape God in our own image, but we are called to be shaped in the image of God. Blessed. Beautiful. God moves beyond our expectations, people. And the heating and the cooling that happens as we get that dream, that aspiration, that hope in our lives. The heating and the cooling is important. For once again, God moves in the unexpected and the new possibilities. Because God is God of possibilities, we are a people of possibilities. We need to move from the no, but, the but, the but, the but. We need to move to the yes and. And maybe just even and yes. Beth Tasca, the author and leadership coach of Fortune 500 companies, says there is power in an authentic yes. Listen to what she says. When we encourage a person to get to an authentic yes, meaning when, when they move toward their higher truths, dreams, and desires, we're taking a stand for that person. We hold a possibility for them of a future that is they otherwise would not have found. Letting go of the buts means that we hold space for the possibility that people can see in the world. Now, I don't want to quit, quickly discount the buts. And as my kids, I try to say that as much as possible because it makes them giggle. The buts, the buts, the buts. <laughs> there might be a variety of reasons people say no but, no but, no, 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 right? Check it off if you've heard it. Check it off in your mind if you've heard this one before. We've tried that before. <laughs> Have you heard it before? Yeah? Maybe it isn't the right time. Maybe it isn't the right moment. Has the ground been tilled? Is the set soil ready? Is it the enrichment there to plant the seeds? Is it the right time for this thing that could be possible? A yes does not mean right now. Maybe a no doesn't mean no forever. How about this one? 
We are tired. Maybe instead of this, meaning a no, an emphatic no, maybe just behind that, we are tired, is a wonder if we might be the right person, the right community, the right people to carry out the possibilities. Are we good enough to make this happen? Maybe we haven't found our gifts yet, seen the vision, caught the dream, ready to move forward. We cannot, we cannot do what is possible in the midst of constant and overbearing cynicism, skepticism, bemoaning, and degrading of our churches and of the United Methodist Church. There is a place for good, intentional therapy, complaining, sharing, sharing our hearts. There's a place for good, intentional sharing and therapy of spiritual and mental hardships, but every chance we get is not that chance. How do we continue to hold up a space for dreaming, a space for hope, a space for freedom in people's lives. I found that people take as much time as they need to do something they're enthused about and passionate about that they're energized about. They will take as much time and energy to do that when they have caught the vision and caught the dream. How about this one? We don't have the resources, either people, or often we need money. Have you heard that one before? But we don't have the resources. This is a great one, I love it. Because it means that if that is true, and that's what we really need, if we can find the resources, if we can excite the people, then the possibilities will flow. Because let us say it again, we are people, possibilities. There's power in yes. There's power in and yes. The power of being creative. Einstein, in the concluding sentence of a March 1984 article titled Mind Play, says this. Creativity is intelligence having fun. <coughs> the opposite is to behave. <laughs> To behave means to be, it can be another way of saying, let's keep the status quo. But we have to be reminded that the status quo favors those that have status. The status quo favors those that have power. We must extend our possibilities to everyone. To expand our possibilities, we must be willing, or maybe even able, to expand our vision of where God can heat us up, where God can cool us down, and where God can make something beautiful in our midst. Moses says, no, but Lord, but Lord, but God, I can't do this because I'm not the right person. I don't have the right gifts. I have a thick tongue. I'll tell you what, a lot of times I have a thick tongue. You'll know that. I mean to say the right thing up here, but my tongue for some reason doesn't get it out. Do you ever have that? Yeah. So, what does God say? With me, everything is possible. God is a God of possibility. Therefore, we are people of possibilities. Through the love of Christ, through the love of God, we are reminded of all that is possible. We're reminded of all that is probable. And so as we come to this celebration here this morning, we're reminded of the ways that we've overlooked, let go of, stood in the way of, the possibilities that God has asked us.
us to live into. Join me in the prayer of confession that is in your bulletin. The Pharaoh decrees death to the foreigner, the power of fear and hate and rage surrounding us. The burning bush flickers beside us. The presence of God invites us. In the presence of the Holy beckons us to a life of compassion. We turn our heads. Forgive us our lack of notice. The Red Sea waters stand at attention. The threshold of grace is breathtaking. In the company of grace and compassion, there is power. Forgive us our reticence to embrace our failures to move forward. In the power of the burning bush, in the quiet of stillness, and the everyday noises of living, of living, God is calling to each one of us, telling us to trust in the gifts with which God has bestowed on us. You are beloved and blessed by God to be a blessing to others. Rejoice in that. It is this morning that we come to rejoice as we're mindful of the ways that God has acted through the life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ to continue to show us that everything is possible. We're going to ask you to join us today in a sung communion liturgy, and you will find that sung liturgy on page 2257 of the faith we sing. So I will give you time to pull that out as we join together today. Resurrection, 
You gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of the Word and the Holy Spirit. On the night in which he On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread, he raised up the bread, he gave thanks to you and broke the bread. He gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was coming to an end, he took the cup and gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and men for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. Upon his resurrection from the dead, he was known by his disciples in the breaking of the bread and in the power of the Holy Spirit. Your people have continued to share the bread and the cup unto today. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith.
share with me. Lord, we thank you so much for this day and all that it has brought. We thank you for calling us together as a community, and hopefully we have heard that you are a God of possibilities and not restrictions. Open us up in this time of worship and as we go out into the world to hear where your possibilities may be known. We thank you for the love and grace that you have shown through the life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. May it be that grace that carries us on. We give thanks to you and dedicate these offerings to your work in this place and in this community and beyond. Amen.
Thank you.